Samsung and Motorola, AT&T and Verizon, Galaxy and Droid, Active versus Turbo. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and if you need a phone that'll take some abuse without sacrificing performance, odds are you've weighed at least one of these. Which one is better for you? Let's find out. Well, first off, the network is going to make a lot of the difference here. The Galaxy S6 Active is exclusive to AT&T, the Droid Turbo is exclusive to Verizon Wireless, and for the most part, neither will work on the other. So if you're already beholden to, or have a strong preference for, one carrier over the other, congratulations, your choice is made. But if you're a free agent, and either operator will do, the phone makes all the difference. It should be noted that these are separated by about a half a cycle. The Turbo launched in November, while the S6 Active just hit the scene in June. But each represents the zenith of durable phones in its respective lineup, so let's see how they stack up. Let's talk durability first. Both of these look pretty mean, purple accents notwithstanding, but on the page, the Galaxy S6 Active wins the spec battle. To be sure, the Motorola phone can take a beating with the ballistic nylon cover, Gorilla Glass 3 display protection, and water-repellent nano-coating protecting its internals, but the Samsung edges it out with mil-standard 810G resistant to shock, vibration, and temperature extremes, along with Gorilla Glass 4 and an IP68 rating for total immersion in fresh water. Verizon, meanwhile, only guarantees the Turbo will stand up to everyday spills, unexpected downpours, and the like. The Samsung phone also brings more in the way of physical controls. It features hard buttons instead of Motorola's capacitive tap targets, and it's got a dedicated activity key as well that leads to a special active zone. And you can reassign it to something more useful too, if you want. All those keys, by the way, also offer much more satisfying click and travel than their mushy Motorola equivalents. That's not to say the Droid Turbo straight up loses on the hardware side. First of all, while it's thicker than the Active, it's smaller in every other dimension, giving it a svelter feel in the hand to go with its less ostentatious design. While it can't get as bright or dim as the Super AMOLED panel on the Samsung, Motorola's AMOLED screen is slightly larger and warmer, and behind it sits up to 64 gigs of internal storage, while the Active makes do with 32. Also, Motorola knows its speakers, not just how to build them, but where to put them. The Turbo's speakerphone sits up front where it belongs, while Samsung's is tucked away around back. Moving into software, the Turbo's still got some impressive aspects. And Motorola's custom interface is about as thin as it gets, just a few custom features atop an almost perfectly pure build of Android. That makes it lean and pretty slick, and it also probably makes the Turbo easier to update. Notice this device is already running Android 5.1, while the Active is still on 5.0.2. Plus, the features Motorola's added are, if not always perfect, at least very useful. Moto Display shows waiting notifications when you pass a hand over the screen or pull the phone from a pocket. Turning the flashlight on is just a chop-chop gesture away. Also, the Turbo can dictate incoming text messages to you when you're driving, silence your alerts when you're in a meeting or asleep, and let you give it voice commands without even touching it. What is the current distance to Norfolk, Virginia? Miles. Greetings, Galaxy. Samsung will let you do some of that, but not as well. And plus, you have to deal with S Voice and her interesting delivery. Greetings, Galaxy. <sighs> Greetings, Galaxy. Greetings, Galaxy. What is the current distance to Norfolk, Virginia? Three hundred forty-six point three miles. You've got a much different experience on the Samsung as a whole. 
This is the TouchWiz user interface, and while it's been slimmed down a lot since last year, it's still unmistakably Samsung, with its bright, solid colors and elementary icons. Thankfully, it's much more responsive than in years past, and it also packs its own share of useful add-ons, like the S-Health fitness tracking application that ties into the heart rate sensor on the back. There's also an IR port on the Active with the pre-installed Peel Smart Remote app, if you want to control your TV with your smartphone. You can run multiple apps side by side on the screen if you really need to multitask. And if you don't like the cartoony look of the UI, you can reskin it with a few button presses, thanks to the Samsung theme store. Both of these phones offer quick launch shortcuts to the camera. On the Moto, it's a quick twist of the wrist, and on the Galaxy, it's a double tap of the home key. While Motorola's camera is higher in resolution and packs double the flash, it's also got a smaller aperture and less effective stabilization than Samsung's offering. What does that mean out in the real world? In daylight, not much. The Active tends to produce brighter shots on the whole, while the Turbo usually kicks out warmer photos, but they're pretty damn similar. HDR is much more subtle on the Samsung phone. While Motorola has improved in this regard, it's still a little overdone. Also, Motorola's camera is much easier to trip up and wash out because of its too sensitive exposure controls. At nighttime, Motorola's output tends to be warmer still, which sometimes makes photos look even better. Here, you can see the Galaxy S6 Active's larger aperture and OIS at work, letting in more light than the Turbo does, with less noise to boot. That said, I kind of prefer the Turbo's increased contrast, which makes for a moodier photo. Also, like all Samsungs, the Active has a tendency to err on the vibrant side, while the Turbo produces more realistic colors more of the time. Where the Turbo really loses out is in its ability to cope, to adapt, to maintain focus and take a shot quickly. Samsung excels at this, usually managing to catch a usable photo even in very quickly changing conditions, while the Turbo usually needs a few beats to catch up. That probably won't matter most of the time, but a faster camera could mean the difference between getting the shot and missing it. And besides faster, the Active is also crisper. It just brings that little bit of added detail, color, and contrast that makes for a more dramatic, more memorable photo. If you like a more subdued picture, you'll probably prefer the Motorola, and that's fine. It actually holds up better to the Active than I expected it to. But when you factor in Samsung's available manual controls, its optical image stabilization, and the ability to take photos underwater, well, I think it's pretty clear which is the more capable camera here. As we said in our Droid Turbo After the Buzz video last week, this phone packs a hell of a battery, but it doesn't live up to its potential. Despite its larger power pack, the Turbo is routinely beaten by the Active, whether it's normal day-to-day -day use or heavy gaming. And we're talking a big difference, over an hour in screen on time. Whether that's thanks to Motorola's special features, Verizon's bloatware, or the differences in processor and network technology here, it's really disappointing, and a big blow to the Turbo in this comparison. Also, while they're both packing quick recharge capability and Qi wireless charging, the Active also brings integrated PMA support, so you can wirelessly top up in more places. The Turbo manages a few late punches here. It comes with Verizon's screen assurance, so if you crack your display in the first two years of ownership, the carrier will replace your phone at no charge. As we mentioned before, it comes in an available 64 gig trim, though you may have to get it used. And at the 32 gig level, it's much cheaper, 100 bucks less expensive on a contract and nearly $200 less at full retail. But really, you should be paying less for the Turbo because it's the less capable phone on the whole, from its durability rating to its technical capabilities. That's partially because it's older, over half a year older, which is a long time in mobile. But while I prefer the Turbo's convenient software features and its feel in hand, that's just not enough. With the Galaxy S6 Active, Samsung has built a rugged powerhouse that's really tough to beat if you're shopping for a durable phone. And even with its new paint job, the Droid Turbo doesn't quite measure up. Maybe the tables will turn when Motorola releases its new Droid offerings later this year. Stay tuned to find out. 
For more on the Droid Turbo and the Galaxy S6 Active, check out our related coverage here on YouTube and see our full reviews of each at pocketnow.com. Also subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you did enjoy this video. Until next time, this has been Michael Fisher, Captain Two Phones on Twitter, reminding you to keep your nylon ballistic and your speakerphone dry. We'll see you next time.